and pipe flow plus the equations we learned ahead of time that we use in pipe flow, uh, pipe flow problems, that's what's on the test, test number three, that's happening a week from Monday. We said that it was choice of times to take it on Monday and then it would be a two hour uh, test but you'll have two hours to complete. There's a homework due on Friday. We'll have a problem session on that. Uh, and I thought that it would be helpful just to make sure that all the material got covered for sure since this is the last day on pipe flow that I recorded a lecture yesterday and it's on the Canvas page. It's my, I have kind of a long lecture here. All right, so it's um, in real pipe systems, they are networks. They are networks with multiple pipes. And those pipes might be in series, one after the other. Pipe one uh, discharges into the entrance of pipe two and so on. Or there are pipes in parallel. So just common sense will tell you some things about what we know with uh, pipe networks. For instance, three pipes in series since there are no inlets or outlets other than the inlet for pipe one and the outlet from pipe three, that tells us that flows constant, but the head losses through the entire system are additive. Probably, if asked that on a multiple choice question, you'd get it right, even if you didn't know it ahead of time. Likewise, that are either branching or in parallel, something like that, where three pipes have a common inlet location and a common outlet location. In this case, we know something different. Uh, again, I think you probably, what's, what's the same for these three pipes. They have the same inlet and the same outlet. It's sort of an interesting parallel, or not an interesting contrast to what goes on in a pipes in series. What do you think is constant in a pipes in parallel? Because they have the same, you know, the pressure, say there's a pressure drop that drives the flow. And it's the same, the pressure on the entrance of one is the same pressure that's the entrance of two is the entrance. And likewise, the pressure at the outlets are the same. So what, what must be the same? If there's the same pressure drop, we must have the same head loss. So that's 
what's the same if we look at the flows the, it turns out the flows are additive simple sorts of problems that rely only on that knowledge. Circle things that we do that uh, we're going to figure out, and uh, what we know about pipe networks and the numbers I've given you are sufficient together to figure out the unknowns here. Well, where might we start? I'm trying to figure this system out. Any suggestions from people on the call or people here? Where might we start? Say which of these things would I can think of a couple of places we might start. This one? No, the that one. Yeah. Okay. That's one of the places I thought we might start. And what would what what's the head loss for pipe three? Yeah. Yeah, here. Go ahead. Go ahead. Kenna, you got it. says 20. 20, yes, yes, yes. Someone says that the head loss in pipe 3 is 20, and that's correct. Because pipe 2 and pipe 3 are a branching system, so that we know that the head losses are the same. Okay, so that's, there's one other place that you could start based on what, what you're given. Casey, yes? Did you say that the, if you pull up pipe one is 10, so that means two's gotta be four? That's true, that's the other thing that you must be true here, is if pipe four flow is 10, then pipe one flow must be 10 as well. All right, and then it does, at this point, there, um, We've got everything we need for either the head loss through the system or the Q for pipe two. Either way, we've got what we need. So the Q 
and pipe 2 must be four. must be 4, right? Because this plus that flow-wise must add up to these flows. So if Q3 is 6, then Q2 must be 4. And here's uh, the the, uh, if I ask a question on, like this, the one that's most often gotten wrong is this head loss through the system. So here's your chance to, to stand out from the, from the thousand or so students that have taken, that I've taught this class before. Can you, can you not make the mistake that they would make? What would be the head loss through the, the system. Well, we said in a, this is a pipes in series. You know, we think of one and this branch plus four, that's the pipe in series. And what we said previously was that uh, pipes in series, the head losses are additive. Right, so the head loss through the system, that would be like through the system that's from, say, here to there. The inlet of one to the outlet of four, what would be the head loss? So, uh, what would be the, would H for parallel pipes, would the HL total be uh, equal to each individual one? Well, that's, and that's, um, hey, William, um, that's what people often get wrong, is they're not sure what to do about the fact that there are two pipes that have 20 feet of head loss. And the thing to know is that you're going from here to there, and you know that the head loss is 20. And so if you go from here to here, the head loss is 35, from here to there, it's 20, and from there to there, it's 30. So the head loss through the system is um, 35 plus 20 plus 30. So what's, what's often done, what I see a lot, is this 20 gets double counted, right, somehow, you see four numbers, and so the head loss through the system, you put all four numbers, and that's not right. We don't. You know, and I don't how, know how often that's gotten wrong anymore, because every year I warn students not to make the mistake. So maybe it was a, uh, um, it's a problem that doesn't exist anymore. Okay, so there's a, a relatively uh, simple qualitative system. Now let's do a similar sort of thing where it's uh, quantitative. We use the same So I just, um, based upon what we know about the flows and the Reynolds numbers and the roughnesses, I've said that the, we're going to consider the, the Darcy friction, friction factor to be fixed.
Can you get that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Doug's going to add all a couple of things down below. I can move this up. again the things that we'd like to calculate. How do we go about that? Well, we do, if we're given all of this information, the lengths, the diameters, the friction factors, the flow rates, we could use the Darcy equation to calculate the head losses. Is that a 2 or a 12? Under C. What's that? It? Under C, are they a 8, a, is that a 2 or a 12? Oh, that is supposed to be 12 inches. 12 inches. This. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna think of this as this whole thing. Call it a constant a. We could rearrange it and get get an equation for q as a function of the head loss and another constant b. And you can see that all b is so those two equations head loss is a times q squared q is b times head loss squared we can use that to solve for the things we don't know. As long as we do the calculations in an order that gives us what we need to make the calculation. All right, and it is important to do the steps in the proper uh, order. Uh, and so I'm gonna just start there. And let's just talk about 
which thing we calculate first and then second. So on. We've got a solution that's going to take us six steps because as you'll see there are six unknowns. Not actually doing the calculations, but uh, what, which of these things should we calculate first? All right. Where do you think? What what calculation can we make given what we're given? Can we, can we get flow at B? The flow at B. Let's see. The flow at B. We've got um, the F. Got the F. The L, the D. Um, do we know the head loss? No, we don't know the head loss, so that won't work. Would it not be the same as the flow A, like in the last problem? Oh, will the the head loss will be the same? Okay. Yeah, yeah. The head loss between A and B will be the okay. same, but we don't know what the head loss is A so is just, either. Get the head loss. Okay, so you're revising it to say, let's get the head loss in A. And let's look at that. That'll work because you got the F, the L, the D, and the Q. So, okay. And the equation that we're going to use is do any calculating for a while. We're going to go through all six solution steps and then we're going to calculate. Now, Kenna, you had said uh, what you had already said should be could be our steps two and three. Or, right? But, so now we know the head loss in A. Head loss B. Head loss B, right? Head loss B. Initially, find the Q and B. All right. So let's just we've done. We got this. We've got that. We've got that. out on a Zoom call because of the latency. They, they know the answers, but they're just a little few seconds behind. What do we do next? Speak up or put it in the chat. Lunchtime, I suppose, huh? Hey, come back. Give us an answer. What should we do next? Step four. No one out there? What's the Um, William said find the head loss of C. 
find the head loss in C. Thank you, William. For your, and what do we need for the head loss? We need the F, the L, the D, but we also need the, we need the Q. Now, how about um, the Q, right? We could get the, right, William, why do you think about finding that Q? We do that. Got the F, the L, and the D. I'm sorry. Um, no, I don't think it's this. This isn't what we want. The, the F, the L, and the D isn't what we're going to use. What are we going to use? The head loss in the question. Well, can't we use the fact that QC is just the sum of these two, right? So it's not a Darcy, a Darcy equation, it's the continuity equation. Now we can do what William suggests. Now we find the head loss. That's just the, that, that will be this head loss plus that head loss added together. Remember not to double count. Okay, so now it's just the, the calculations and I, I'm hoping I've done it right. I did it with Excel, but what I did was I calculated the, those constants A and B for each of our three types using the equations that I'm just now erasing for the constants A and B. up again and say that <laughs> got that all right and then you can just go through and make the six calculations constant times the known flow for A. And then the head loss is B is the 
the same as the head loss for A, so that's 38.23. Then Q of B There's the flow of B, and then find C as the sum of the two. So now we can find the head loss for C. And now the, we've got all the head losses, so we can get the head loss through the system. did this with Excel. Uh, when you have to do these repetitive calculations, uh, it's helpful for that. Just uh, say for the third time that we've only counted this 38.23 once, even though two of the pipes have that head loss. All right. Any, any questions on what we've done so far? Good, good. All right, one wrinkle in this problem that uh, comes up, it's not so obvious how to solve it, is a case where what we know is the total flow, but we don't know how it's split between the branches. That can come up, and I'm gonna handle that next. So, uh, let's see. Yeah, let's just take this out. Everybody, I'm going to erase this and leave that up because it has all our. And that's our system over there, so. say it's the same system, but what we know is not the flow in one of the branch numbers. That, that was convenient for us in terms of calculation because we had everything we needed to calculate the head loss. And once we knew the head loss, we knew that the other branch must have the same head loss and we could get 
the other flow and then add up the flows to get the total. What if we're given the total? And we're asked to find say that we were given that head loss, what would we do? We don't have the information we need to know, to calculate either a flow or a head loss. So this problem is uh, difficult. And here's the method to solve it. It's um, another example of where iteration is needed. What we can do is we could just guess at what the head loss is through a branch. Okay? Uh, and you can make a reasonable guess based upon uh, what the flows that you have. We had a situation where the flow was only, the total flow was only 6.83. So we might guess that the total head loss through the branches is something larger than what we previously calculated, 38 feet. So I'm just going to try just um, guess that the head loss in A is the head loss in B is uh, 50 feet. Okay, and if we, if we do that, we can then so now with the known head loss, we can say that uh, Q of A equals some number and Q of B is some number using, using this equation. All right, and then from there, what we'll find what we could also calculate is the total flow. Because we'll have calculated the Q of A and Q of B. And we can compare that to what the total flow is supposed to be. So in step three, what we're going to do is um, what the total flow is and then chances are it's not going to be the correct total. We can scale up or down the flows to get the correct total. And the nice thing is is that that split as you as you vary the head loss as you vary the head loss uh, by a particular amount, the Q's are going to go up and down by a factor that has to do with how much you change the head loss. And so once you calculate the, the distribution of flows for a, 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 an assumed head loss, that, that distribution of flows will stay the same regardless of what the head loss is. And that justifies doing what we're doing here to scale the flows up and down. And then once, you, once you've done that, scale Q's up and down to get the correct total, I'm just going to put it over here. You can then calculate the updated 
head losses and calculate the total head loss. All right, and I think we're not going to get through this, but uh, we'll get close. Let's, let's um, implement our solution method. First define the, the flow in A and the flow in B. With our assumed head loss of 50 feet. We could guess anything. You could guess one, a hundred, a thousand, whatever you'd like. It will give you a distribution of flows that you can use regardless of what the total is. This one gives me that, and the total is that total. For my guest, Head loss of 50 feet, I get a total head, a total flow of 7.81. So, did was my head loss too low or too high? Too low. Too low. Why do you say too low? Because that's that is. Because we got a total of 7.8 and we're looking to get a total of 10. Yeah. So it should have been higher. It should have been higher. It will be higher uh, as we... Um, so now we're going to update those flows. We're going to now do step three, scale up. Oh, I would say scale up or, or down. You don't want to do both. You want to... Doesn't make sense to do both. You got to do one or the other to get the correct total. In this case, we need to scale up. So what we would say is to scale the up flow in A is the ratio of the flow we want to the flow we calculated times the flow for A and likewise for B factors and the uh, old flows are those numbers and here are our updated flows which do add up so we got it there's our so now we know the flow in A and the flow in B and it does add up to the flow in C that's forgiven so that's good Now we can calculate the head loss in A is uh, 2.389 times 
six squared. And just to double check, as a confirmation that that really is the correct head loss, and these are the correct flows, we take uh, the A constant that's zero, oops, uh, 4.779 times 4.14. Also gives you 81.99. Uh, we, we also need, yes, in my notes I, I forgot to get the head loss in C. So need to calculate all of our head losses. Then we can calculate the system as as that value. And then in my um, recorded lecture, I did a couple of checks to make sure this number was correct, so I got a, another page of notes, but um, the method is um, complete as of, as of now. So just to uh, review, we, we had a case where we have a total, but we don't know the distribution between the branches. We guessed the head loss, we calculated flows for the branches, then we scaled up the flows to get the correct total, recalculated the head losses, calculated the head loss uh, through the third pipe in the system, and then calculated the system head loss. And that's it for this lecture. Uh, any questions? Okay.